Hello and welcome to the 32nd Burnsville Fire Muster Fire Truck Parade. My name is Betty McNeil and next to me... My name is Dale Nelson, retired from Egan Fire. Wonderful, Dale. We have the most gorgeous day ahead of us for this 40, uh, 32nd year and it's exciting to be here. So we are channel 14 WCTV and as you can see on our screen we do have a website, Burnsville TV. Again, we welcome Dale and everybody else within the community. If you've never been involved in the fire muster, you got to get out because we have all kinds of activities going. Absolutely. Yep. And um, also this year marks the 10th anniversary of the attacks on uh, Washington, D.C., New York City, and the plane that went down in Shanksville. Yes. So we think of those people and all the people that died on that day. And you're right. It is a beautiful day to have a fire truck parade here. We do have a tribute that will be a very special float for the 9-11 and again right here for the 2011 Fire Muster Community Parade. It is part of the Minnesota State Fire Chiefs Association and that will be, I'll like say, coming in front of us yeah, as you see the flag here. Let me just give you some more information on that. Uh, this again is a part of the memorial of the 343 firefighters who had lost their lives in the World Trade Center. These very brave firefighters gave the ultimate sacrifice to save others. Every year, America, America across our country does pause, and this, of course, being our 10th year, we lost lives in September 11th, 2001. It included many, of the fi many firefighters and, of course, uh, law enforcement officers, too. And we, again, sacrifi they sacrificed their lives for us here in the United States. Absolutely. And we also want to remember the, the families that are left behind as well. That, that, that created a huge void for those families, changed their lives forever. And the city of Burnsville, the firefighters did uh, do a huge fundraiser. And again, we contributed several dollars you know, to the uh, firefighters that were lost to their wives and families. So again, that is a decade, uh, a year later, Dale, which doesn't seem possible. Yeah, right now what we're seeing on the uh, TV is some of Burnsville's fire units coming through, some of their support vehicles, and some of their grass vehicles. They're used to fight uh, grass fires and that type of thing. Followed by some of the uh, larger fire engines that you're going to see today, new and old, Betty. It's, yes, it's indeed. It's always fun to see. Yeah. Now, I've been told we have a newer one. It's the 2008 uh, Pierce Pumper. Yep. These are great trucks. These are made over in Appleton, Wisconsin, and you're going to see a lot of these. These are basically the Cadillac of the fire truck are world. They? they are. They are definitely built to last. <laughs> well, again, that's that's the brand new one. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people look at the trucks, and uh, that truck that just went by probably represents about $400,000, maybe a little bit more, which is a lot of money, but people need to remember these are 20-plus year vehicles. And, of course, their aerial truck. It's coming by right now. Now this is engine two, and this is a 2003 General Safety Rosenbauer Spartan. Mm -hmm. Am I pronouncing that right? Yes, you are. It's a 75-foot uh, Telquist ladder that elevates a 100 GPM master stream. Boy, again, I don't know this lingo, but it tells me it's 1500 GPM water mm -hmm. pump. It has holds 500 gallons. Yes, it does. On to the next one. Yeah, now Egan, or, uh, Egan <laughs> in the wrong city here. <laughs> that's Burns, all right. Burnsville does a lot of their <laughs> own uh, uh, medical responses, and that's a paramedic unit that's going by on the screen right now. Not only are they firefighters, but they're paramedics as well, which is an added value. So if you're on the fire scene, somebody goes down, each and every one of those firefighters, men and women, are also paramedics. So we're seeing a couple of their rigs here. And again, that's uh, the M2. They do have different numbers for each one, as I have been told. Yeah, the L stand, the M is, uh, signifies the medics. Okay. And then what you're seeing on your screen right now is the Medic 3, and it's the road rescue for the ALS ambulance. For the guys and the gals that are in the fire department, they know all this lingo, Dale, which you do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of it. It's been 20 years with Egan, and uh, a lot changed since... Uh, since um, 9-11 and one of the things that changed is uh, all the boundaries the cities have been erased oh, so okay. when Burnsville has a large fire Egan has a large fire they usually page out both cities because the end result at the end of the day people really don't care what name is on the truck Absolutely they're just they're calling not. for help and and that's that's been a wonderful thing and 
We had a, a wonderful experience working with the firefighters from Burnsville. Great group of men and women. Now this one, I, I may be wrong. I don't think so, but uh, you know, th this is one of their older trucks here. And a truck similar like to that one, they made a model. There was a model. It wasn't that exact truck, but very close to it. They made a model of it. What, what, what do you mean by that? If you go to a hobby store and you look, um, I can't remember the name of the model company right now, if it's Ravel, but you can actually buy the model and put it together of the Burnsville oh, engine. Oh, really? Oh. And See, I was not aware of that. So these are two of the uh, trucks out of that same vintage. Okay. Both on Peterbilt chassis. And these, um, you commented about the last one being 1,500 gallon a minute. These are probably, these trucks would pump about uh, 2,000 gallons a minute. And again, holding about 500 gallons of water on each of them. You just don't realize how fast that is until you hear start, start hearing numbers. And they own, they have 500 gallons for each one. Is they, that it? They carry 500 gallons in the event that they come across a car fire in an area that does not have hydrants. For okay. example, out on the freeway, uh, they are able to at least uh, extinguish the car fire. Wonderful. Well, here we, on our screen, what you are seeing is the mobile com command vehicle. <laughs> It's a 2005 LDV Mobile Command Fire app for fire and police. I have been in that uh, command post. It is unbelievable what it has in there. You I know, can't go into detail, but, you know, it's just... Well, these vehicles are incredibly important because uh, you take an incident when the bridge came down, 35W bridge came down, and communications became somewhat of a challenge. Cell phones were down and what have you. These type of vehicles will actually have satellite telephones and uh, satellite uh, computers so they, they're able to hook up. So if in a large event were to happen in the city where communications were to break down, they'd be able to establish uh, and be able to almost run the city from within that vehicle. And that's amazing just to think about that alone, Dale. The technology is amazing. Mm -hmm. it's, it's beyond my And not all cities <laughs> have it. Talking to a guy who just started doing emails nine years ago, so it's a lot of the <laughs> stuff I don't understand that's in there. Same thing, same thing, sure, yes. Sure has a lot of pretty flashing lights. <laughs> well, we did five years ago, and the social media is totally different what we're doing right now. Mm -hmm. Now, what you're seeing now is uh, probably having on your sheet there, but it's, it's more of a rapid response. This is going to be for typical grass fire, brush fire, something you find along the freeway, something where running a big 40, 50,000 pound pumper off into the grass here would not be appropriate. Uh, they would they would send this vehicle out to quickly extinguish the fire. And again, more of our Burnsville firefighters today Indeed. offering their time, which has been great. Well, you are watching BCTV. That's Channel 14. The Burnsville High School is where we have our station, and we've been there a few years now, so we have the opportunity to work in with the high school uh, teachers and, of course, principal and superintendent. Mm -hmm. And again, we'd like to thank uh, Dick Ames from Ames Construction for being a yes. sponsor of today's parade, as he has for so many years. Wonderful people at Ames Construction. Very good. Another one of Burnsville's medic units, Medic 1, that you're seeing. Now, I can't tell, dear Dale, what year this is, but again, from my notes, it says it's a yeah. 2006 right. Road Rescue. That is the company that manufactured that vehicle, Road Rescue. They and used to be right here in St. Paul, but they moved kay. to the southern part of the United States. And those, uh, quite a few of the uh, ambulances were produced right up there off of Shepherd Road, up by the oh, old back. But they, um, in the last eight, nine years, have since moved hmm. to the southern United States. Moving to the next one, now again, this just proves that not all fire units are red. Why but is that? Each community can pick the color that they want, and this particular vehicle that you're looking at right now is a multi-jurisdictional unit. This is the uh, Minnesota Collapse uh, Structure Vehicle. It, they refer to it as a SOT vehicle. And it's a Dakota County one. Now, the people that make up the crew on this truck are going to come from many different communities. So again, when the bridge collapsed in 35W, trucks such as this, there's one here, there's one in Edina, and throughout the uh, Twin Cities, um, these type of trucks would respond and have all kinds of special equipment on them, especially for building collapses and being able to shore things up and rescue equipment. And spe specially trained people, so they're not only firefighters, but they're specially trained in confined space rescue and these type of things. So does each, each county have one of these? Most counties do it, especially along the southern, southern part of the, uh, the state here. 
Okay. You know, they may not have them in a county up in the northern part of Minnesota, but when you start talking about the dense population down here and the size of the buildings, mm -hmm. uh, those type sure. of vehicles are necessary. Okay. Well, there's old and there's new fire trucks, and so it's wonderful to see one of the older ones. You know, there's so much history in the fire service, and people become connected to the vehicles over the years. And when they pull them out of service, quite often they try to restore them and, and maintain their, uh, their heritage. And this is the one on the button for this year. It is from Buffalo. Uh, boy, I'm not sure what year that is, but how beautiful is that? that that's a cool old truck. And it, it's fun watching it. Uh, and you'll see another truck uh, that's going to come through the parade here today from Egan that was restored. Oh, and it's okay. amazing the work that these people do when you look at that truck and finding all those like the black hoses on the side of that truck mm -hmm. those are all used for drawing water out of ponds and what have you they call those hard suction hoses so the thing the challenge quite often is being able to get all the stuff so they can restore the trucks Boy, I would think that would be difficult all right here's we're back down to uh, back to red <laughs> yeah because there are some yellow t trucks also. And green. Absolutely. This is the South Metro. It, boy, it's a brand new one, in fact, Dale. It's a 2010 Pierce. Yep. Another one out of Appleton. And okay. So, yeah, now, some of these, uh, you'll look at the doors on these trucks, and, uh, again, some of these, now, these are just regular doors on these things. And you'll notice, Betty, some of them will even have the new roll-up doors. What do you so, mean by roll-up? Um, it's it's kind of like the old Coca-Cola trucks. They roll up the doors. Oh, okay. The, the sides and stuff. And, sure. And uh, these particular trucks... Um, when you look at the fire trucks, while well, you can buy some trucks right off the rack, if you will. You can. Um, most of them, most of them are custom built for each city, because every city is unique unto itself. I never thought about, and, about uh, it that way. And some, some will have railroads coming through. Some will have highways. Some will have special, um, you know, have high-rise high buildings in them. Mm -hmm. That's why the uh, Brunswick had that squirt. So each one is ordered and custom built for the city. Okay. Well, moving to the next one. Again, we've got a gorgeous truck. Once it gets a little closer to us, we'll get the uh, model and all the information on that. Again, you are watching Channel 14. Again, Betty, as the truck goes by, look at all the equipment that had to be located. The ladders, the special nozzles. A lot of times these things end up as collectible things from the firefighters when they get rid of the trucks. But look at that, at the meticulous work that went into that truck. It's from Crystal Fire. All the different things it takes to put these trucks back together. And it's funny, when you start restoring a truck, all of a sudden the firefighters will say, hey, I know where this part is or I know where that oh, part I'm is. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> good, good to have connections. <laughs> it's good for them to clean out their garages. <laughs> <laughs> well, what we are looking at next in our uh, next shoot will be another newer fire truck. It's from Dayton, Minnesota. There we go. There it is. Northwest community. And looks like it's a brand new one again. It's a 210 or 20. My goodness, let me get my years <laughs> straight here. 2010 Spartan engine. So it looks like they'd be adding more graphics to that, or what would they be adding to it on the side? They will be eventually, I'm sure. And that's one with the roll up doors that we spoke about. And you'll notice more reflective material on the trucks. A lot of that is required now by law. There's too, oh, many, okay. too many firefighters getting hurt and uh, killed out on the freeways and stuff. And um, you're seeing more lights, more reflective materials Switch. on trucks. So. Okay. We're switching to the next one here. In the past, we've had a lot of the trucks go by so fast we couldn't catch all of them. So we're trying to have them slow down a little bit. You know, Mud Bay, I don't know exactly where that is, but this truck is here every single year. And again, they, they spend a lot of time in keeping that truck in shape. And obviously it's a retired truck. It is truck. beautiful. That's made by General Fire and Safety up in North Branch, Minnesota. So a lot of times you don't have to go too far to find the manufacturers for these trucks. And see, I didn't realize that. I just thought a lot of them were created out east. Yep. American LaFrance is this next one. That's the manufacturer of that one. And a well-known company that's been around for a million years. Well, not a million, but it's been around for a lot of mm -hmm. years. And build high-quality trucks. All these trucks are high quality, so I, I don't mean to sound like one is and one isn't. Right, yeah. Uh, I understand that. That's from Falcon Heights, so that's north north of us quite a bit. Anybody who's at the State Fair was at Falcon Heights. Oh, that's <laughs> the right. State there you right go. right in Falcon Heights. So. Exactly. On to the next truck. Another Pierce. 
gorgeous, gorgeous South Metro Fire. Tell me about this one, Dan. Oh, South Metro Fire. First off, is uh, <coughs> excuse me, is is the West St. Paul and South St. Paul kind of merged. Okay. And um, and again, this is a, another one of those telesquirts. Not only does it have a ladder, 75 foot ladder on the top, Beautiful. but it does have a fixed nozzle. So. If on a high-rise uh, building, if they need to deliver water to the sixth floor, they can raise that and extend that aerial and deliver 1,500 gallons of water right to the source of the fire, even on the sixth what, or seventh floor. And that's what they need. They need that extra strength. Well, we're going to move on to the next truck again. We're looking at some of the older ones. I like how they've intertwined the new and the old. This is beautiful. All right, now, is this your baby? This is the one. <laughs> uh, this truck was originally <laughs> down at the uh, ammunition plant down in Rosemont when it first started out. Really? I believe it's a 37. I may be wrong on the year. Uh, but then it went to the University of Minnesota where they actually use it to clean sewers. And the city of Egan purchased this truck as their very first truck. And uh, that's our friend Dave, <laughs> Dave Hammer, they're driving it. And uh, they just restored that truck, basically right down to the frame from the fine folks at Superior Collision. Spent a lot of time and energy, and we thank oh, them. Wonderful. And the wood, when you look at the wood mm -hmm. in the back of the truck, they just built their new fire station, and the trees that they harvested off that site was used for the wood box. Okay. Tough to get off of that one. You know you've done a lot of handwork on that one. What you see on your screen right now is the Lakeville Fire Department. And again, this is another LaFrance uh, truck, 2007, aerial ladder number one. And that one there, if you look at it by LTI, and that one has twin deck guns up on the top of that bucket. So they're able to deliver clearly 2,000 gallons of water a minute out of that mm. thing. That's enough to move a Volkswagen across the parking lot. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> or anything of that size, huh? Those are incredible <laughs> trucks, incredible. Okay. One thing about a fire truck parade, it's always loud, but that's a good thing. That's when the horns blow and we celebrate what they do. Beautiful shot of the Lakeville Fire Department truck right there. It's all good, Betty. This is, it, I spent a lot of years on these trucks you, and yes. um, they, they're a part of you. They really are. Oh, so absolutely. Where a police car is just a tool, these really become a part of the firefighters. It's a life link between them and, uh, and uh, safety. So. Well, I've had the opportunity to work with the, the firemen and firewomen here in Burnsville over the years, and they have such a close relationship. And by the way, they make great meals. See I've that shared a few meals. The cab on that truck, that cab was first, that design was first used in Egan back in 1988, what they call a full response cab, and you'll see that on quite a few trucks. It's almost like an RV when you go into it. Hmm, okay. See, Dale knows all this information, so... This We're is another so glad we have you here. <laughs> yeah. Have you here? This is another. This is Egan's newest truck. I don't know a whole lot about this, but it was built also by Pierce. And on this one, you're going to notice a lot less chrome on it. Um, a lot of the cities are trying to economize. They recognize that uh, money is not as readily available as it used to be, and so uh, they're throttling back on some of the some of the things on the trucks. And one of the things is uh, a little bit less chrome. <laughs> we have. Guess what? <laughs> overhead yeah thank you to the helicopter guy <laughs> and tina wilson one of the city employees for cable is up there shooting footage so oh yeah there we go all right good job <laughs> next year i'll be up there putting yeah. my putting my vote in for that yeah. one how do you get that job anyway <laughs> <laughs> i'm working on it <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, another gorgeous truck i mean i keep saying that but you know, how, how excited can you be to have a beautiful truck like this? Well, and it's nice to see the different cities like Deep Haven, Excelsior, Greenwood, Shorewood, and Tonka Bay. They all get together with that Excelsior Fire Department. What a great way to share resources and, and be fiscally responsible to the community. Uh, not every community can spend four or $500,000 on a truck. So cities are becoming more cognizant of that now and saying, well, wait, you know, we'd like to buy a new million dollar aerial truck, but maybe it, the city next door has one, so let's share. So it, it's fun to watch the cities work together. Oh, here we go. This is another fire rescue, again, red and white. Uh, the front on this one is a little bit different. Uh, notice the beautiful flag on the side. Again, 9-11. Spartan, and this is made by Spartan from New Brighton Fire Department. And again, you'll see the roll-up doors and some of the new things that, some of the new technology, Betty. It's we just got a, a comment from one of the guys in the truck, one of the firemen, and he said, nice parade, and that's New Brighton. So thank you, New Brighton. We will never forget 9-11. Great footage. 
Yeah, that's, All a, right, that's guys. a wonderful truck. Good so. job. This next one that you see, I don't know if you have it on your sheet there, but it's another Seagrave. Okay. And these trucks were pretty popular around the Twin Cities for a while in the 60s. Uh, I know Edina had one and several of the communities had one, but this is another one of your aerial trucks coming in. Now, this is this an older one than, this, than Dale? This would be an older one. This is going to be probably about a 19, something around 1960s, 1970 vintage. Okay. A little bit plainer front end and, and what have you because the engine is a mid-mount. It's behind okay. the driver. And it has a 100-foot aerial. So once that's extended, it'll extend out 100 feet, which means it'll get you to about the 8th floor window. Oh, okay. So... Now, I don't know how he flies that helicopter there sideways we go. like that, but... There we go. Yep. Oh, like I say, they just don't make them like they used to. Look at uh, just the lights on that and, the, and uh, the front of that truck. How beautiful is that for Lamberton? Yeah, yeah. Well, it's, it's nice that they save these trucks, and I don't know who owns that. I would assume that one's privately owned. But it's nice when the cities have them and they're able to restore them. And of course, got the old hand crank siren. Yep, and the bell. So. Thank goodness for electronics. <laughs> great old truck, great old yes. truck. Now, from our friends in Apple Valley comes our next one. It's another Spartan okay. fire truck. Beautiful truck. Again, one of the newer ones. It is, and I, I believe they bought a couple of those. Boy, it's so new. It looks like on my sheet here it says 2010. Yep. Doesn't look like it even has the first door ding in it yet, Betty. No, <laughs> no those are to come. <laughs> this is engine number three. Thank now, you, Apple Valley, for coming. Now, what's cool about this truck, and I have always liked it, is it has an inside pump panel. So the guy actually inside that cab as you see it go by, oh. the pump panel's actually in there. So on a nice cold winter night when it's six below zero, you're inside the warmth and comfort of the cab operating the pump. Oh, well that's one advantage to that one. I always liked that, but they'd never let me get one of those at Egan, <laughs> Betty. <laughs> get out I wonder why, Dale. Get out in the cold. Next shot, again, we're going, I like, I've said it earlier, but I like how they're rotating through the older ones and the newer ones, uh, and this seems to be an older one. From Keokuk, Iowa. Is oh, Keokuk, one? I've yeah. been to that town. He's uh, he's in this parade every single year. Yes. And, um, it's not a big city, but, you know, they have a gorgeous truck. Look at that one. And I'm sure it's gotten bigger since the last time I've been to Keokuk, Iowa. Another, re another retired truck. Mm-hmm. What have you. But, again, it's, it's great that people preserve the history of these towns. Wonderful truck. Absolutely. And, you know, the other thing is, Betty, it's, it's not very cheap to run one of those trucks and have these guys drive these things all the way down for the parade at diesel fuel at $4 a gallon. Oh, um, sure. These things are not good point. Good for mileage. <laughs> well, so this one that we see on the screen now, what would, th would that be diesel? This one is probably a gasoline engine. This is an okay. older truck. It's out of Savage. It's probably one of their original ones. It's ab obviously a restoration truck. 1952 Dodge Pumper, is that the one we're looking at? Probably, a year older than me. Beautiful. <laughs> Finally something older than me here. Beautiful. Again, Savage. If you're new to the area, Savage is, again, another suburb just right next to us. So we thank them for coming, too. It is. All the, all the chrome on the side of the truck, just to the rear of the driver, that was your pump panel back then. Very few gauges. does have a lot of knobs. And some of the trucks, as they go by, you'll see more gauges, more knobs. They're not, it's not as confusing as it looks okay. when somebody walks through. Think of them, nothing more as faucets, turning on different faucets. Different way of thinking. And good. And the yep. next one. I believe this is St. Anthony, is it not? Um, I think it is. Uh, St. Anthony Fire. It's another restored truck. And, and you mentioned earlier, Betty, about yellow trucks. And mm -hmm. it, it all goes back. Now, when this truck was built, there was some controversy over... What color? trucks are, are better seen? What colors are better seen? Okay. And that's when you start seeing the lime, lime greens, and the yellows. To me, I have always asked the question, who couldn't see a truck, no matter what color it is, when it's this size? I would so. think so. <laughs> <laughs> but again, it's, it's nice to see the uh, different people that restore these trucks and keep them nice. Well, in Minneapolis suburbs, St. Anthony. And we see the Boy Scouts on, on top. That's a big deal to be on a fire truck and be a Boy Scout at that age. I know my kids growing up always enjoyed being able to ride on the trucks. Wonderful. So it's a good time. 
Especially when parents spend so much time on the fire departments. There we go. Absolutely. You'll see that on the next truck, more families. It's important to let the families be involved, too. Well, because so much of your time is devoted, you know, to, to be a fireman and um, all the different hours, odd hours that you work. But dedication is the key. I have not met one fireman or fire person, period, that have not been dedicated. Yep. This is an older purse here. That's made out of... Uh, Oh, no, I, I'm drawing a blank here. Uh, it's made out of uh, Wisconsin. And um, Bloomington had a lot of those trucks, and Minneapolis had a lot of them. That's an old retired Minneapolis rig there. Okay. And that dates back to, that particular truck probably dates back into the late 60s. Does maybe it? Maybe early 70s. Oh, now look at this one. How beautiful is this? <laughs> it is fantastic. We have a boom camera that's doing all that beautiful camera work right now. You Thanks, know, Duane. You know, you look at that truck, even from up on top from the boom camera, that, this is a complete restoration. And what oh. a beautiful truck. Some painstaking labor went into that, right down to the fire extinguishers on the back and the chrome on that truck, all relocating all that equipment. It's very hard. That little chrome strainer on the back. Yes. That's used for when you, that right goes on there. the end, end of the hose when you're drafting water out of the pond so you don't start sucking up water or dirt, dirt and debris. So to find all these things, sometimes that's impossible. Yeah. Well, we're back to yellow now. Yes, we are. <laughs> <sighs> and the details on that truck. Look at that. Now, Betty, pay attention to this one as it goes by. The driver and the engineer, or the driver and the people are sitting in the front, but the people in the back of that truck, look at that. Mm -hmm. They're mm -hmm. out in the open. So how yes. would you like to be in the back of that truck going out at 3 o'clock in the morning in j middle of January? The guys in the back of that truck are going to freeze. So I a, a don't think so. A lot has changed. Yes. A lot has changed. And, uh, All for the better. Yeah. In yeah, that case. It really is. It's especially in Minnesota. Yeah. Speaking of the better, you saw uh, one of Savage's oldest trucks come through mm -hmm. here. Now you're going to see one of their newer ones coming through here. This is another Spartan truck that's coming through. Now on my sheet it shows they have one that is 2006 and then another one that's 2001. So there's no designated time where you would keep a truck? No, they generally run them about 20 years, maybe a little longer, before they okay. do a refurb. And this is an, this is an engine. An engine is a pumper, and a truck is an aerial, tr is an aerial vehicle. So this is a gorgeous truck. Again, an inside pump panel. You'll see no gauges on the side of this truck as it goes by. That's because they're all in the back door, right above that, which is engine 26. Okay. All the gauges are within inside there. And so they're able to actually do all their pumping from inside the comfort, the air-conditioned or heated cab of that vehicle. And good job to our camera operators yes, for uh, absolutely. staying queued up for with all us. of them. Yeah, we really appreciate that, guys and gals. And Jack is out there directing traffic. <laughs> Again, look at the old. How classic is this? All right, I want this truck. <laughs> I, I could see why you would. It's beautiful. The work that, that you guys put into these old ones are just incredible. And like you say, you know the connections and everything where you can get parts. Look at the woodwork on this truck. Oh. Look, at, look at the lights on the side. I mean, um, you look at the running boards and that little fire extinguisher, a little brass fire extinguisher on the mm -hmm. side of that truck. All the things, a little brass thing right there and then that hand light there. Uh, the woodworking, Beautiful. all this stuff is very meticulously done. Carbonate of soda? Yep, that's the old fire extinguishers. Yes. Isn't that something? Look at the woodwork. Beautiful. Did Absolutely Did I mention beautiful. the woodwork? Yeah. <laughs> and the, I like and, the woodwork, Dale. The, the pump cans, <laughs> all that stuff. All right, now we've switched to a bigger one. This is Chan Hassan. Yeah, this is their aerial, or they'll refer to it as an aerial platform because it has a bucket on it. And this is made by a company called LTI out of Pennsylvania. So how high up would that go? This Six, one, seven stories or this more? One, this one's a 100-foot aerial, and it will get to about the eighth floor window, about the mm. eighth floor window, depending upon how close they can get that vehicle to the building. Okay. Because you lose some height based on the distance from the building. But again, uh, that one would be able to deliver at least 1,000 to 1,500 gallons of water a minute out of the nozzle on the front of that truck. And you can go right up to a window of that truck. With that truck, you go right up to a window and uh, rescue and a victim there. if need be. Mm. Another piece of uh, great equipment out of her. Great There's work. the pump panel this time with all the faucets. Okay. So Beautiful. It is. It's a great truck. And then here we are with a special new truck. New, <laughs> new truck that we see on our screen, but it's a beautiful old one. A little deeper red in color. Uh, look at the lights. Look at the wheels on this one. 
it's, it's a gorgeous truck again you know the, the light on the front of that truck on the uh, passenger side the hose reel everything's everything's been located look at the little lantern light uh, as it goes by there's a lantern light right in front of the driver there mm -hmm. on that truck I mean if you didn't have people that that offered those things that. back. Yeah, I mean, a lot yes. of times that stuff is, is taken by firefighters as they get rid of the trucks because they collect memorabilia. Oh, yes. Another Wonderful. restored Minneapolis fire uh, fire vehicle that will be going by here in just a second. Beautiful. All the different sounds of a fire truck. Sounds like he needs to get miticized. <laughs> <laughs> now, here, here, comes, here comes another truck. Uh, this one's white, obviously. And you're going to see a lot of white trucks and you move down to Farmington. Farmington's big on their white and blue. And you'll, you'll see them as they come through today if they're here. Okay. And this one's from Columbia Heights, I believe. Yes, and that, of course, is a little farther north from us. But again, that's still part of the Minneapolis-St. Paul area. Hey, Betty, a day like today, it's a nice truck. But again, go to a fire in the middle of January and it's an mm -hmm. open cab. I don't know. Count me out. I <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they just want you to get used to it on the way there. But look at look at again the meticulous work that's gone into restoring this truck. It's an old Mack truck. Wonderful. With all the lights and nozzles and axes and all the things that have been relocated. Now does Mack still make trucks? They actually Mack makes the uh, the chassis that these go on. Okay. It's like you'll see Peterbilt's coming through. Peterbilt makes the chassis, and then mm -hmm. General or Customer or another company will actually put the body on it. Okay. Because when I think of Peterbilt, I think, of course, just your regular trucks, over-the-road type of trucks. So, they obviously, they, can, they may make more than that. Yeah. Well, here's a good example. Now, there's that one says Ford. Ford. Ford on the front. So, when mm -hmm. that truck came out of the assembly line, it was uh, just a cab and chassis. Okay. And then that particular truck went over to, I believe, General Fire and Safety, if I see it on the side there. And then the people up at General Fire and Safety up at North Branch built everything on the back of it. The pumps, the boxes, really? and all that stuff was built right up there in North Branch. So it's not just you know one place that everything is made. No, it's it's all over. So the, each department uh, tells them what kind of what kind of chassis you want your truck on. Oh, okay. Some are freight liners, some are um, Peterbilts. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you. It's that Streets' original wood fire pizza. Oh, that's, that's okay, that was that truck. sponsor. Yeah. Wonderful. It's our truck. All right, here's another ladder truck then. This is from the Manitowoc community down there in Prior Lake, the uh, casino people. And um, these people uh, have their own fire department, their own paramedics out there. And uh, this community is incredibly generous to the communities around them. They, they, make, uh, they make many, many donations each year of uh, AD, AEDs, which are these automatic defibrillators, uh -huh. to private businesses oh, and yes. nonprofit agencies. So they've been very generous with, uh, with their money. More cities need more defibrillators. This one's 114 foot aerial, as you can see on the side. And uh, with the casino down there, they have that hotel down there, so it's nice oh, to have they, their own they equipment. They need that. They need that. Okay, coming up on our next shot, looks like we've got another beautiful red truck. St. Paul Park. Thank you. And um, they're, of course, just right off of uh, just down Highway 61, just south of Newport. And again, this is another Pierce vehicle another gorgeous gorgeous truck well we couldn't have a better day to have a, a, a fire truck parade this is September 10th 2011 and this is the Burnsville fire muster if you're not familiar with our muster it's something that's been going on for the last th 232 years and we welcome you to Burnsville on our next truck that we see coming up uh, this is another Peterbilt. We were talking about that. It started mm -hmm. out as a Peterbilt. That could have easily been an over-the-road truck of some sort or a dump truck. But then it was sent out, and uh, they put the type of box on it. So would the engine be different on, on, on each one? They can tell what size engine they want in each of these trucks when they're built. Now, this is the one I was telling you about that's the model kit. Okay. You go into a hobby store and go into a hobby shop, and you can actually buy this truck as a model and assemble it. And you know what? The person that's driving is Ken Slipka. And I've been told this is his truck now. Oh, it is. So this is his baby. <laughs> Ken's yeah. been involved in this a lot of years. And it's 1980 General Safety, again, what you said earlier, Peterbilt. And I'd venture to say they'd be part of his family. I didn't get a close look. I don't know if his wife is in there. But, but if he is, he is. And she is. And the, Wonderful couple. Next one, Savage. Yep, and you notice on the front of it, it's got a helmet, 
with the 343, recognizing and acknowledging the number of firefighters that died in the Twin Towers on 9-11-2001. Wonderful. From our folks again at Savage. Thank you, Savage, for being another member for, of our truck parade. You know, what's a little bit different on this one, Betty, is when you look at the aerial, some are what they call front mount, some are rear mount. Now, you okay. notice the bucket is hanging out of the rear of this truck, and uh -huh. the actual mount is on the front. So this would be called a front mount. Okay. And uh, you're able to get closer, head right into the building, and then, and then the bucket hangs bucket. over the end. And some of the other ones, most of what we've seen today are the rear mount where the buckets actually hang out over the driver's cab. Oh. So there's some worthless trivia for no, you today. No, good information. <laughs> good information. Oh, now we have someone very special on top of that truck. Looks like he's from State Farm. Again, one of the older trucks. And a regular at the parade every year. It's always good to see these old trucks again. And again, the families. It's so important to have families involved. And, and again, this one was made up in North Branch from the folks at General Fire Safety. Kirk, looks like, is that you in there driving? This one. Oh, it's his family. This <laughs> vin that vintage year, uh, Betty, that truck probably uh, was able, that pump was probably, as a guess, probably about 750 gallons of water a minute. Really? And then as time moved on, they went ahead and they manufactured larger pumps. Now, now the trucks are pumping over 1,500, some 2,000 gallons a minute. Hmm. Beautiful. Just wanted to take a glance at what we're looking uh, at. Prior Lake, right to the south of us here. Another one, everything is inside. This is a rescue truck. Okay. Roll up doors on it that you're seeing. So inside you're gonna find um, Jaws of Life equipment, cribbing equipment, anything and everything that you'd need out on a rescue scene. And this one's made by Custom Fire, which is in Osceola, Wisconsin. So if you've ever been on the Apple River, yes. if you follow the Apple River up by the Dairy Queen there, okay. Osceola is right, right up there. there and that's where they're made. Wonderful. Real, real close by. So now I'm gonna start looking for roll-up doors. Yes. I've learned that today, Dan. Roll-up doors. So. Oh, what well, you're gonna see next is just incredible. And it is absolutely beautiful. It's Chaska's, probably Chaska's original truck, again, another restoration. Their original truck. Hmm. A lot of history that could be uh, spoken from that truck. It's 1926 Studebaker. Yep. Again, Chaska's first motorized pumper, it says there. And again, they were able to recover the equipment. Great. Use it for the parades. Well, we just keep coming, and so the next one is right, will be right here in front of us. And looks like we've got some special uh, people on top of the truck. Old International, it looks like. So would this engine be smaller, Dale? The pumps on this, uh, on back in that vintage year, uh, my guess is it'd probably be around 750 gallons a minute would be the pump. How much water that truck carried, I, I don't know. Um, okay. each, each, when they're built, they can design the, the tank size that they want. And this one is from the St. Paul Winter Carnival, the Vulcans. Oh, the so Vulcans. So maybe if you get lucky here, you're gonna get smudged, Betty. Uh -huh. <laughs> They'll come over and say, hello, Betty. There we go. <laughs> Smudge you. Very special Dalmatian too. So. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. The truck is probably enjoying running in this kind of weather rather than when they <laughs> normally yeah. do for the St. Paul Winter Carnival. And we got, of course, some of the Klondike Kate on top of them, too. Oh, and here comes The more. Vulcans are coming. The Vulcans are coming. Yeah. Watch out. Watch out. <laughs> yeah, and there they are, right there. All right. Yep, maybe, like I say, Betty, they'll come over maybe smudge you. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I have good memories of the Vulcans over the years. Hail the Vulcan! Hail the Vulcan! Hail the Vulcan. Way to go, guys. All right, we got good footage. Thank good, you. Good group of guys. That's just a lot of fun. We have, uh, uh, in the wintertime, quite often, uh, a lot of the departments will go down and, and march just in our turnout gear in the parades. And, and mm -hmm. that is really nice. And it's nice to see how the public uh, receives the firefighters. And they're such a quiet bunch. <laughs> All right, now. <laughs> Oh, is this more your Klondike oh, Cades, or what is this here? Oh, yes, yes, yes. St. Paul does it right. Again, if, you, if you're not familiar with the Vulcans and what they do, they're just a small little group that creates all kinds of fun activities in uh, our cool months of the years. Yep. Of the year, I should say, of each year. <laughs> they're there to help mark the end of winter. That's exactly it. That's exactly it. And there they go. 
they have just a little bit of fun. Another mm -hmm. vintage truck from New Germany. Now, New Germany, from here, I'm trying to think what direction it is from Burnsville. It, it's got to be west. Yes. And I don't know if it's south, but I, my guess would be west, but maybe a little south. Well, and thank you guys for coming. I mean, we have people coming from, again, Wisconsin, lower parts of Minnesota, upper parts of Minnesota, Iowa, and, Iowa, and of course, North and South Dakota. So, You know, for people that have never been to one of these uh, fire musters, you're really missing a lot. It's more than just a parade. Yes. There's all kinds of activities and fireworks. And by the way, uh, all the trucks that you're seeing in these parades, at the end of the parade, you can actually go up to them and talk to the people, and you can actually feel the trucks, and a lot of them will even let you climb on. And they'll give you the history of the truck. They will. Uh, what they've had to do to it as far as, as, far as finding old parts, new parts. Um, again, these are dedicated people. Well, if you put Granny in a rocking chair up on that thing, you'd look at <laughs> <laughs> you know, the Beverly Hills. Again, oh. it's uh, Howard Lake's truck. And again, a very nice restoration. Be beautiful town, again, west of the cities. And I was just kidding, Howard Lake. Granny would not look good up on that truck. <laughs> She'd have no business on that. That's a gorgeous restoration. That is. That is. Thanks for yes. Howard Lake for coming. Absolutely. And again, you know, a truck like that has to be trailered and a lot of, sure. a lot of time. Everything. Expense. Blue and white is what you're going to see next on our screen. I'll bet uh, you this is Farmington. I, I was going to say from the history <laughs> that you just said a few minutes ago, Dale, I think you would be right. And again, what kind of doors, Betty? What did we learn? Roll up. <laughs> we got the roll up doors the here. Roll up doors. So it looks like, what is there, four on the side for this one, Dale? There are, and uh, there's probably more across the back, and uh, it's just depending upon what kind of equipment. You know, Farmington does a lot with, uh, you know, it could be anything from an agricultural rescue, okay. somebody getting a limb caught in a combine or something, God forbid, or, or okay. a serious accident. Um, they carry all the equipment for extrication, collapse, high and low, high and low and level low. rescue. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's all there. These guys all been trained and the, the beauty of this thing is what you're looking at here are all volunteer fire department members or paid on call as they refer mm -hmm. to them now these are guys and gals that spend their time each week spending several hours training and then going out in the middle of the night and leaving their families and pagers have an uncanny ability to know when a steak is ready to come off a grill so a okay. lot of interrupted meals yeah so hmm. henderson now I know where this is. Okay. If you go down and just down by Lesseur, down um, in that area, yeah, sure. Just down by Lesseur, you'll come into come across Henderson. Down there is a small little town along the Minnesota River, but a great group of people down there. And we have all kinds of flashers and everything. Sure do. And again, more more of the paid on call department. So I, I can't say enough about them. I mean, you know, we do have our our career departments like Burnsville, mm -hmm. a great group of people. But about 80, a little over 80, 85% of the firefighters in this country are paid on call or what we used to call volunteer. Mm -hmm. So hats off to the men and women who give that up volunteer. their time away from their family and family functions to serve their community and risk their lives doing uh, it. Absolutely. Well, they come in different sizes. And now I've gotten off the color a little bit. Now we're going to talk about size. <laughs> <laughs> Betty, even if Size I could, of a fire truck. If you could get me in one of those, you probably wouldn't be able to get me out. You'd need Farmington's Rescue to extract me or extricate me out. How beautiful. These are fun little, fun little trucks. And we have an engine two and, of course, an engine one. And all of your engines are numbered. And we have another one. Okay. The, again, a little smaller in size. Looks like, boy, it's got... Uh, it, would that be a collector plate on there? Yeah, it's yeah, collector, it is a collector plate. collector plate. Mm -hmm. Isn't that a cute little vehicle? Cute. More of a European vintage. Uh -huh. Don't want to go on 35W maybe, but um, <laughs> I'm not sure how fast it goes. But boy, does that look great. Oh, and of course, Very smoky, nice. smoky Bear. That's right. Reminding you that only you can prevent Pre forest fires. That still holds true, doesn't it? And it's Smokey Bear, not Smokey the uh, Bear. Smoky, okay. Smokey Bear. Smokey Bear. They'll correct you. Ah, okay. It's quite a little history. They found that little bear cub along a cliff mm -hmm. after a huge fire. One surviving little bear, and he became their mascot. Oh, well, looks like we've got two trucks that are kind of towing each other. Yeah. <laughs> and that's not uncommon in these, no, in these parades. No. You know? These things, uh, they're really, really old. The first one from Winnipeg, whole, you know, A, from Canada, A. Wow, A, Canada, <laughs> A. a. And, uh, and I don't know what it says, Jewel on the side of that one, but uh, mm -hmm. they do break down. And 
It's funny, the guys get to the end of the parade, and they'll lay underneath them with a crescent wrench and a hammer and whack them and a few times. And just keep going. And, and they'll start right back up. Yeah. You, you can't kill them. You know? It's just that they die out a little bit. So, again, it's fun to watch the people restore these trucks. And there's hardly a parade that goes by where there isn't one that's being towed or pushed or... We're well, left in the dust along I've, the parade route I find this interesting, Dale, because we're at we are at the tail end of our uh, fire truck parade here in Burnsville, Minnesota. Again, September tenth, two thousand and eleven. I want to thank uh, everyone that has been involved in the parade today, and we, like I said, we couldn't ask for a better one. It, it's been a great day. It really, really has. And uh, we've got uh, looks like uh, Burnsville Police is going to be bringing up the end here and. Uh, and Betty, I just again, you know, if people haven't had an opportunity to get to one of these Burnsville uh, fire musters, I would highly encourage them. It's a lot of fun for everyone. The little kids like it. Um, you know, everybody likes it. Mm. So we want to wrap up. Again, they do have an open house that's coming up. Uh, we'll have more information on that uh, on your screen. So we thank you once again. Thanks, Dale, for coming, for being a part of this. And each year I keep learning more and more. Well, it's an honor to serve alongside you. And before we go, once again, we would certainly like to thank uh, Dick Ames and Ames Construction yes. for sponsoring today's parade. And to all the firefighters and families that took a little bit of time out of their day to, uh, to spend with us. So once again, on behalf of myself, Dale Nelson, and Betty. Betty McNeil. Thank you very, very much. And we'll see you again next year. Signing off for this year. You bet. Have a thank great you. day. Thank you. Yep. Bye-bye.